Whether you have a skin interest, a skin query, a skin trauma, or skin disease, I warmly welcome you to Heal Thy Skin, a podcast brought to you by Derm Health Co. I'm Marnie, dermal clinician, dermoscopist, and your podcast host. Skin is deeper than beauty, and our mission is to build the largest platform of specialized practitioners focused on skin health and skin empowerment. Join me each week where we go deep into the skin and beyond to hear stories and education from leading practitioners on a journey of skin health. Welcome to the Heal Thy Skin podcast. I'm Marnie, your host, and today we are speaking with Georgina Wasdall, who is a creative young woman living in the UK. She's a model, aspiring actress, and disability advocate represented by ZBD Management, who, by the way, is an incredible agency that hires um, models living with a dis- disability and those with a visible skin difference. Definitely worth a look, and we've put the link in the show notes as well for you to check them out after you've listened to this podcast, of course. Georgina is living with chronic fatigue syndrome and ME, along with some other associated conditions for the past 11 years. And her life really took a turn when she was diagnosed at a really young age, sometimes for the worse. But Georgina explains all the incredible things that have happened since that diagnosis and she's just absolutely thriving in the life that she's living now. She shares her story and hope for those that are living with ME and CFS and she also explains how important it is to raise awareness and have models that are living with disability or visible difference in the fashion and in the media. I started by asking Georgina what she thought was the biggest misconception about ME CFS. I would say that one of the biggest misconceptions is that it's just tiredness, that I can just sleep and I'll feel better, or that if I can be cured by diet and exercise. And although profound relentless fatigue is characteristic of the disease, ME CFS is much more than being tired. It can also affect anyone of any age, and it is not a rare condition. Just in the UK alone, it is estimated to be over 260,000 cases. So it's not as rare as some people originally think. There's also a belief that it's all in our heads or that the condition isn't serious. And I'm lifting in a quote here that I've got written down from the Institute of Medicine report, MECFS, that took place in 2015 that says, MECFS is a serious, chronic, complex and multi-system disease that frequently and dramatically limits the activities of affected patients. So all these misconceptions are not true and purely just myths floated around. So I can imagine sometimes you almost feel like you'd want to carry that quote around in your pocket for people that say, oh, you'd be okay if you get some sleep. It's We're going to get into that a little bit more deeper into the episode, just about some of those misconceptions and things as well. But I think that's a really good misconception just to talk about right from the get-go. Georgina, tell us about your story. So I'm 21 and I live in the UK and I live with the chronic illness called MECFS, along with a few other associated conditions that's come along with it. I started to get ill when I was 10 and when I was 13, I finally got the answers and diagnosis. And whilst living with these for the past 11 years has been no walk in the park, I believe everything happens for a reason and I do my best to find the positives in my circumstances and help others do the same which I run an Instagram page for where I share my story because sharing my story to help others and to raise awareness, but it also helps me so much to be able to talk about it. And creativity in some form or another has always been a big part of my life. And it has led me down a path to where I am today, which is a model, a disability advocate and aspiring actress represented by an agency called Zebedee Management. As I said, creativity um, has always been a part of my life. I have loved photography and pre-diagnosis, I was an active person, a dancer, a drama student, a swimmer, and was doing well in my schooling as well. It was a really difficult time when I got the diagnosis, but what I didn't expect was just how much it was going to affect my life. I felt a bit like Alice in Wonderland, falling down the rabbit hole, a bit lost and unsure of my path. Finding myself took a while, 
But with the help of my family, I was able to get out of that hole. And now that I have, I try and talk about how I got to where I am today through body positivity, growing my confidence, acceptance of becoming a wheelchair user, being kind to myself and just taking care of it. But also talking about becoming proud of my story because through all the trials and tribulations, I'm here. You know, I'm loving my life and all the opportunities I've been fortunate to experience so far in my lifetime, whilst following my dreams, which I didn't think was possible for a while. So how long, and you were very young when you were diagnosed, or were you diagnosed or did you start to show symptoms at that age and you weren't diagnosed until later on? I started to show symptoms at the age of 10, but I didn't get the diagnosis until I was 13. It was three years of constant doctor trips and tests and stuff with very little answers. And I think it was my mum and dad who started researching first off like their own backs to try and find out why this was happening and why nobody knew what was going on with me. Do you remember what it was like as a 13-year-old? Did you understand the implications of this might be something that you would live with lifelong? Or at that time, were you thinking it might be passing? At the time, I thought it was passing. They said to me, because I was young, that I would probably grow out of it. But now that it's been, oh, hang on, let me use maths here, seven years since my diagnosis, I think it's going to be lifelong now which at the age of 13, I didn't even know what the condition was. So I had no idea of how it was going to affect me, Yeah, how long it was going to. And as a 13-year-old, we can't even think of ourselves as an adult either. So we can't imagine no. us being an adult. So that would have just been quite a progression of going into early adulthood with this condition that you only had just learned what it was. Are you able to just explain what ME-CFS is for those that may not know a lot about it, some of the symptoms and causes and some of those risk factors or complications as well? Yeah, absolutely. So ME-CFS is a long-term chronic illness with a wide range of illness symptoms. ME, which stands for myelogic enzymitis, which is a really easy name to say <laughs> it's the preferred term by most people as CFS which stands for chronic fatigue syndrome um, implies that this condition is only fatigue related so many people refer to the condition as ME-CFS um, there is many varying degrees of this condition and no two peoples are the same and for some it can leave them completely bed bound for me it's meant that I need to use a wheelchair whenever I leave the house otherwise I'd be housebound and for a fair few years, I was. There is currently no known cause of ME-CFS and no diagnosis test either. Hence why diagnosis can take so long for me, like I said, three years. There is currently testing going on to see if they can find some answers. But it's been surmised that it happens after a bad viral illness, which would sit right for me as my symptoms started after a really bad bout of back-to-back -back tonsillitis when I was younger. But ME-CFS can also come with other conditions, for example, insomnia, which is kind of crazy. That condition that creates chronic fatigue can also create sleep problems, which is not a good mix, as you can imagine. No, not at all. The symptoms of it can vary from person to person. But I would say under an umbrella, it's like having a bad case of the flu, the type that knocks you off your feet and leaves you in bed. That's pretty much an everyday baseline for us. Other symptoms for this condition can include muscle and joint pain, which can be debilitating, brain fog, headaches, migraines, sore throats and glands, unable to control body temperature, feeling dizzy, nausea, and a range of other symptoms associated with post-exertional malaise, which is when most people find daily activities make their symptoms worse. And the severity of symptoms can vary from day to day, or even perhaps within a day, depending on what you are doing and how you are spending your energy it's definitely a condition that fluctuates um, and is not the same every day when you wake up what was the first sign for you that something was wrong so the first sign was sore throats because as a child I suffered a lot from tonsillitis but I started to complain to my parents that my throat was sore and it felt like I had tonsillitis but to look at it there was no sign of the illness it just looked normal I then was then coming home from school a lot with just general feeling of being unwell, like I had a cold or flu. And my parents would wake me up in the morning and I would just have no energy. 
they thirst for I just didn't want to go to school but that cycle continued for months and my parents and I was back and forth to the doctors having tests done with no real answers at all. I was attending one of my dance classes one evening and I just physically couldn't do it anymore. I came out of the class to my dad and just said I can't dance. My parents had then had their thoughts confirmed and knew it was something serious as I had danced since the age of three and absolutely loved it. I wouldn't just stop and it was one of the worst losses of my condition having to leave my dance school for sure. Um, I was put under hydrotherapy and physiotherapy after doctor appointments but that ultimately made me worse. Um, So after my mum and dad did some researching we saw some specialist paediatric doctors and we had more scans done to rule anything else out and more tests and was finally referred to a specialist MECFS clinic where I finally got the diagnosis. So it's a very long process and long and exhausting process. Was it a relief to finally find out what the diagnosis was? Yes, a relief for that moment and then a sudden realisation that, okay, now I have this diagnosis, where do I go from there? I remember just sat in the car before going into the appointment and I kind of knew I was going to get it confirmed, but at the same time, hoping that it wasn't true that, you know, I had this and I just felt so sick. But yeah, it was definitely the start of something, you know, start of something good, something bad, you know, it was a very crazy day. Mm. And you're at such a definitive age where you're working out where you fit in the world, among your peers, within yourself, you're finding yourself. After you were diagnosed, how did that change for you and the way that you saw yourself amongst your peers and where you kind of fit into the world? It honestly affected every element of my life. You know, the saying when your life gets flipped upside down couldn't have been truer. I didn't know how to accept any of it. And I certainly lost myself for a while. Because like, as you said, as a young teen, self-image and finding who you are definitely starts to become more of a thought. And there was no one like me who I knew or anyone in the media I could look up to for some guidance, if you will. I had to leave school leave an active lifestyle to one where everything I did took significant energy and I became distanced from the society and all the norms that came with it and that certainly had an effect on my mental health. It felt like I was constantly battling something or another. You know, I battled to get a diagnosis, battled to get my school to believe the diagnosis and help me where necessary, which meant going into homeschooling. Then we had to battle to keep the funding, which they then pulled just before my final exams. But thankfully, they did reinstate a few weeks before. It was just constantly having to battle to prove that this condition was real to people, which certainly didn't help me in accepting it when others weren't accepting it either, because adults weren't believing this condition was real. And I was still just a kid and trying to prove to them that, you know, I couldn't do ordinary school. I needed that extra bit of help. And you just felt like you was always constantly hitting a wall. I remember being in a meeting with some of the school faculty and it was one a really emotionally draining meeting. So I was getting tired and upset. And one of the teachers said to me, my parents, she was fine at the beginning of the meeting, implying that I was faking it. And I just don't understand why you would fake an illness and then fake an illness that nobody believes in anyway. So, but they had no understanding on how to deal with it. And thanks to my family, though, and my specialist um, at the time, I got the education I did need and passed my exams and learned how to deal with it and control my illness and look where I am now. So it's almost like not showed them, but like, you know, you didn't believe me, but I believed in myself and that meant a lot more than what you did at that time. Were you always a tenacious child like before your diagnosis or or do you feel that since being diagnosed it has driven that tenacity of not necessarily I'll show the world but uh, wanting to do well and prove yourself, uh, not prove yourself, but being able to, you know, prove what you're doing Mm. and have this driving force and this fire in your belly to do well? I would say I've always had the drive there, but this definitely lit that fuel that I needed to be even more passionate and driven about certain things, especially, you know, getting awareness out there to people so that 
others who come up into this world, whether they're going into school or something, don't have to battle as hard to get that awareness. And I wouldn't wish it on anyone to go through what I went through. So it's definitely given me more of a drive. I mean, at school, I always wanted to, you know, get those top grades now it's not top grades it's you know trying to uh, find my way in this world and be the best that I can be while doing so yeah amazing you're doing a great job in regards to your journey you, you talked about homeschooling and secluding yourself from the outside world at times Talk to us more about this journey of this self discovery to doing some of the work that you're doing today what started that I don't really know what the first initial start was. I knew that I was not doing well mentally and I needed something to focus on. And that is when my mum came across my modelling agency, Zebedee Management, and we went for the first test shoot, not really expecting much. And I got signed there and then, which was, you know, a bit of like, wow, what on earth just happened? How can I just go from one minute being like normal and then the next minute I'm signed to an agency? Like what happened? And that was definitely like a spark that I needed back into my life. It showed me that my life could still be filled with incredible things, like even with my condition. I had now started this new journey, journey that I didn't even think would be possible even when I was well. You know, I always dreamed of becoming an actress, but never actually thought, oh, I would actually get the opportunity to do so. My Zebedee management, my agency, they're absolutely brilliant. They're the first of its kind and everyone on their books is someone with a disability or difference. And it's amazing because we all have this common link and understanding, even though we don't have the same conditions we all know what it's taken to get there. We all know what it feels like to go through life with some sort of um, disability. And I remember sitting at one of the catwalk events that we've done and I wasn't feeling too good, but to others, I probably looked okay, you know, and one of the other girls just looked at me and said, you're in pain right now, aren't you? I can just tell. And even though I was acting fine, she saw through it and I was kind of taken aback because normally besides from close family and friends, people don't really pick up on that or see that. And somebody came into my life just at the right time. Like I said, I was not in a good mental place. When I left school, I lost all my friends. I didn't have any, you know, contact with the outside world. Excuse me. <laughs> it's hard talking about it sometimes, but at the same time, I do enjoy talking about it. And without them to help guide me and be that you know, positive focus... I, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I just have so much love and admiration for them and what they have done for this community and for me. And like, they're giving me a shot at my dreams. I mean, I couldn't ask for any more than that and creating amazing opportunities and jobs that help me give me that drive and that passion and that and stuff to work on and for. And, you know, of course, just believing in me because I never thought I'd be in this position or this path I'm on right now. But it's where I truly belong. I can just, you know, you can just feel it. You know, when you're doing a photo shoot or you're doing a job and you get that feeling inside and it's not like anything else you've ever done. It's just like, this is me. This is what I'm supposed to do in life. And I think, uh, you know, finding it, thanks to my mom, um, back in 2017, it started this whole new journey for me of, you know, self-acceptance and realizing that I had this condition. The condition didn't have me. At the end of the day, this is still my life, not ME CFSs. And my wheelchair, you know, I'd be stuck in the house without it. It's not a bad thing. It's an incredible piece of equipment that is going to help me back outside and back into having some freedom. And I recently got an electric wheelchair and that is just opening a whole new doors for me because, you know, I can finally move myself without having to rely on others. It's an incredible feeling. We went out for the first time and I left my family behind because I didn't realise how quick I was going because I've never been this quick. <laughs> it doesn't oh, hold so me back. <laughs> that's so amazing. I'd love to hear, what was the car drive? Or I'm not sure how you got home from that first meeting with the agency. What was that time home with your mum like did you just look at each other like what just happened a bit yeah a bit shell-shocked you know just like sat there like smiling you know you've got that butterflies in your stomach you're buzzing you're like did, 
did that really just happen? Did I just get that right? Did I just sign with them? Like, what on earth am I going to do now? Where does this go? All oh, the opportunities are endless. How am I supposed to do this? What are people going to think? You know, I, for a while, I didn't even tell people because I didn't know how to say to people, you know, I'm with a modeling agency. You know, it doesn't even sound real. Um, and I think we just sat in silence for a while in the car, you know, just kind of like, wow, <laughs> just no speechless, really. I couldn't have even imagined back then, you know, just what it was going to do for me and just what I was going to experience. You know, it's the way it's developed itself is like a dream, really. Like sometimes you just feel like you're, you're walking on air, like, is this really my life? You know, do I really get to do this? You know, sometimes you have to like pinch yourself and be like, yeah, this is all real. You are doing this and you are working hard at it. And, you know, you, you, you haven't given up. You, you keep going and you've been given this incredible platform and a voice. And it's brilliant because then I get to help spread awareness of not just my condition, but other invisible illnesses, other important stuff and mental health and you know helping other wheelchair users become you know accepting of their chairs as well like I've kind of worked it into my style and fashion you know it's it's, it's just given me a whole new sort of life and and with each photo shoot that I do I mean I look back at that first one that first test shoot and I you can see that my anxiety is still so high like my arms are like crossed around me and now with each photo shoot like I do, another part of me is like unlocked. Another layer of confidence is added, you know, and I'm very lucky and I've got to work with incredible people. And they have certainly each played a role in helping me becoming who I am today. Like each step of my journey can be like, oh, I did that shoot then. And then that was a major change. You know, I met that person. I'm definitely proud to be me now, which I wasn't before joining this journey. And I'm proud of my condition, you know, wheelchair and all. And if I can help others by helping to put inclusion out there and bring awareness, then I feel like I've done my part as, you know, my part of my journey. Because, I mean, I'm inspired by others in this community and I hope to help inspire others you know, to help the next generation brought up into a, a world that is more accepting so they don't have to face as many challenges. Although the battles I've faced have definitely made me stronger than I could even imagine that I could have been. If I'd continued the journey that I was going on, you know, before I got ill, I'd probably be in university studying science probably was my path or, you know, doing English literature. And it's just like, I'm a world away from that now, but I couldn't be happier. Like I grieved for a while that I couldn't have that. And now it's like, you know what? It doesn't matter. You know, things happen for a reason. And yeah, I couldn't be happier with <laughs> where I am right now, which is great. So incredible. I just love hearing that. And I had goosebumps just while you're talking about your story and I it could just feel the passion coming across. Might I add just to listeners that we're on opposite sides of the planet, but I, I sometimes believe that, you know, you can feel through someone's voice that passion. And I certainly felt it when you were telling your story, Georgina. So thank you. Yeah. You mentioned something that just stuck with me, and that is that being part of this modeling agency gave you a platform to have a voice and to be able to share your story. And, and, and it just hit me. This is something that was kind of taken away from you as early teenager because people weren't believing you about your condition. So what an incredible opportunity to now not have to fight for it when you were talking before about it was such a challenge and it was always a fight. And now you're being encouraged to share your story and that's just so powerful it's definitely a flip of the switch of how things have turned back around on itself like yeah one minute you're fighting to prove it the next minute you've got a voice and you're helping to show people that it is out there you know and it, it's not hidden we may look okay but you know it's, it's it's not a hidden completely illness we're all together in this and I think that is why that I'm also so passionate about is because I had so many people not believing in me you know even doctors were like you know oh it's it, she's she's just got growing pains you know she's she's just growing up she's probably got trouble at school and it's like no there's, there's so much more to that there's so many layers to this illness so many layers to people you know 
And it's just amazing that, you know, like I have this platform now. And when you receive a message from somebody off a post or something you've done to raise awareness or a campaign, and it says that you've helped them, that means more to me than, you know, any other acknowledgement or reward because I was that person and I didn't have somebody to help guide me or help see that you know there's good to this life there is something more to it so when I get those messages you know that's what I really do it for to help others and that feeling it's I just love it because I know that if I had been that person I would have wanted somebody like me (laughs) to be there for me. Yes, so incredible. How do you think that treatment or diagnosis has changed for the ME CFS community over there? Do you think it's changed much since you were first diagnosed seven years ago? I don't actually think it has. I think it's still, in a way, still so new to doctors. Like they don't, there's not much knowledge about it and therefore not much knowledge on treatment. I mean, it is untreatable and incurable. Um, but there was a technique that they tried to use with me back in 2017 and it was like stand every 10 minutes or move every five and I'm like really this is the treatment you are offering you know that's only going to be detrimental to my health not and that has actually now been ruled out as a treatment so yes actually there has been change in treatment of others but it's still more done I would say looking at the mental health side of things and making sure, you know, that's treated well because that certainly doesn't have a good effect on MECFS when you're not doing mentally, that then your condition is doing worse. And I know when, say, in 2015, that was a really rough year for me. And because I was doing so unwell with my mental health, my CFS and ME was at an all-time low. I just couldn't do anything. I went to Disney World, Florida, and it sounds super cheesy, but that was like such like a magical moment. Like it was like, you know what? I'm in Disney. I am surrounded by magic. I'm surrounded by my family. You know, love is, you know, I can still have this amazing experiences in life. You know, it's not all doom and gloom. You have this condition. Yes. You have very difficult days. Yeah. You're pain every day. You do. But, you know, you're tougher than that. You can get through anything now you have faced many hurdles so I think there's a lot of focus on mental health too which is brilliant because you know we do need to talk more about mental health because it affects so many people not just people with invisible illnesses because I do think it's natural when you get something like a diagnosis that's so unexpected and so out the blue naturally you're going to feel a little bit down and it's easy like I said to fall down that rabbit hole and not know where to go from there so I think that that has been a focus on treatment to help people through that and I'd love to hear about some of your favorite experiences since being with Zabidi Management the modeling agency where to begin I am very lucky and I've done quite a few campaigns with them (laughs) there was one called Kintsugi which is the Japanese art of mending like broken pottery with gold So it was like we was mending our scars and making them more beautiful with gold. So we was all in gold, like swimwear, and we had gold in our hair. And my photos, my head was laid on a mirror and I had gold paint poured over my head and was just like dripping with gold. And I was just like, I sat up from the photos. It was just, I couldn't open my eyes. And I was just like, this is the craziest thing I have ever done but this is brilliant (laughs) expression creative yes this is what I'm all about you know getting creative with stuff and I just remember just sitting there just after and I had like these gold drips down my face I had a gold encrusted headband of sequins on my hair (laughs) and then the thing was that night I was going to a show a really really relaxed concert you know it was outdoors and I was still covered in gold because I had no time to change and I just this woman walked past me and she's like you're a mermaid <laughs> and it was just it was brilliant and then it was a really hot day at that photo shoot and we thankfully was all in swimwear you know swimwear photo shoot super fun it was all women 
and we were sat outside sunbathing in between takes and having a right old natter and you know you go to these shoots as the campaign shoots and you just have such a wonderful feeling like you're in this little bubble this little world and you can just be your ultimate self there's no judgment there is understanding on a, on a different level and you can just be yourself truly and you get in front of the camera and everyone is like you know yes you're doing great you know helping build your confidence I mean that was the first shoot I did with Zebedee was everybody beautiful and that was a swimwear shoot so little old me back in I think late 2017 she's just starting to you know become self-accepting body positive and the first shoot we do there's about 20 of us and we're there we're in swimsuits we're in the middle of a huge set and it's like go and there's nothing like jumping into a deep end to get you started you know (laughs) it's honestly just so crazy like you, you can't even believe it you can't put it into words sometimes the feeling that you get behind and these kind of shoots and during lockdown obviously a lot of things have changed but thanks to technology like us today talking from you know UK to Australia we've been able to do remote photo shoots which again has been like you wouldn't have even thought that would be possible to you know do that and so I've had my younger sister who is absolutely incredible. She is my best friend. We have become incredibly close. Me and my whole family have had such a great bond. And then over this course of, you know, this journey, we've become even closer. And we she's been my, been like my little photographer with like holding the camera so photographers could like call on like Zoom or something and take the photos and making giant wings out of flowers you know how do you spend your days which my dog absolutely loved you know he couldn't stop smelling the flowers (laughs) oh dear (laughs) but yeah each shoot is so different you think you know what you're going into and then it takes a turn and you do something completely unexpected and I think that's what's so fun is that it's not predictable Each photographer you work with brings something new to the table. You know, you always get in to do something creative and do something that is so fun. And it's very me because I used to love being behind the camera. I used to hide actually in front of the camera. And then now I've moved in front and it's like, well, how times have changed. (laughs) (laughs) So it's like you understand like the photographer side and you're like, right yeah so that might work you get into a different mindset and I love feeding my brain with new information I love learning I love creating so you know getting to do these it's it just keeps fueling that passion it just makes you want to do more makes you hungry to you know learn and you know keep doing the best that you possibly can at things yeah, so it's just so wonderful. And as well as just helping with that journey of acceptance and self-love and raising awareness and making lifelong friends, why do you think this particular agency or just modeling in general is so important to see more wheelchair users or those with a disability? I think it's so important because, like I said, back in 2017, when I was going through my diagnosis process, there was nobody, there was nobody like me to look up to or to help, you know, be that kind of light in like the darkness, you know, so that I could see that it was perfectly normal and acceptable to uh, be different. You know, society has this thing of making us all think we come from the same mold. It's like, what is normal? We are all so different and unique and that's what makes us beautiful. But For a while, that seemed to be, you know, hold back. You know, we were like almost covered in it. Just you had to look a certain way. You have to be this. You have to do that. This is what society thinks you should look like. And that is so detrimental to people's health. And I think that, you know, modern agencies are definitely becoming more diverse. And I know my agency is represents all disabilities, differences, you know, as an LGBTQ plus division now which is incredible and it just it puts us out there into the media into definitely 
a gap you know it was missing from life in modeling in acting in tv you know we're starting to see these kind of people trickle into mainstream society and I think that helps so much with acceptance you know because people then not only who have the conditions but people who don't see them and it starts to become more normal for them because you know when you go out on the street you get stared at you get you know look down upon I have had people knock my legs in my wheelchair with their suitcase even though there's plenty of space around me or you know gasped when I stood out my chair and like literally said to me oh my god it's a miracle you know people can still use a wheelchair and still stand there are so many reasons why and I think that is so important to get that out there to show people you know there is so many different things there's so many different degrees of um, disabilities and differences and I like I said I lost all my friends in secondary school I was only left with a few that I knew from childhood and I think well when I look back now it shows me who my true friends were which is somewhat of a positive but I think because they didn't understand either they had no idea how to befriend somebody who was like me or know how to treat me you know it's they see some people still see a wheelchair and think oh my god that is such a bad thing you know when actually it's such the opposite and I know that it's going to make a difference because even now when I see people in like wheelchairs or you know or just any disability, you know, like with a walking cane or an amputee. And I'm like, yes, that makes me so happy to see. And I'm like, this is brilliant. This is getting people out there. It makes me proud to be who I am. They are living their life and showing, you know what, we are still awesome. We are still beautiful. We are still fashionable because you know what? We still love fashion. We still love dressing up and, you know, creating styles. We don't lose that when we get ill. We are still the same person and we don't lose that same In fact, sometimes it makes us more driven to be more fashionable because it's like, you know what? If you're going to stare at us, you're going to stare at us for a reason. You know, we're going to look fabulous whilst in our wheelchairs or whilst we have an amputee. You know, I've seen so many people in my agency who have these incredible um, prosthetic legs that are bright yellow or something. It's like we're not hiding anymore. We are ready to be seen. We are ready to be out there in the world and hopefully the world is willing to accept us but we are ready for that change so many yeses yes 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 and not only to have that representation which is so incredibly important for youngsters but also just for people to feel more comfortable in themselves that you can go down the street and you're not going to be asked questions and and I think with that raising awareness of having more people in the media having more people doing modeling and in art fields such as acting and things like that with a disability or a visible difference it's so important because then it's not so unknown for certain people that haven't been around that because I think sometimes it's fear of the unknown and a lack of education and understanding and it's so great that you're breaking those barriers but it also makes so much commercial sense for business to have those with a disability in their marketing campaigns and market because you just said of course you love fashion you're going to want to eat at your favorite cafes and wear the nice clothes, whether that be sequins or whatever it is, you know, as flamboyant or as sleek as you want it to be, but it makes commercial sense for business. And, and I think that's really exciting that we are seeing some more progressive brands that are coming on board and seeing that such a large part of the population will identify as being disabled or with a visible difference. So it's really important that it's represented that way as well I couldn't Um, agree with you more on that yeah it's like we still shop for clothes and we want to be able to see like other people you know styling these clothes and being like oh yeah I can wear that this there's no reason why I can't that person looks great and also like it and just you know shops as well you know becoming more inclusive because I know sometimes I go shopping, I call it like the forest of clothes because I'm at the height of the clothing and the rails are so close together. You just feel like you're just pushing through the trees sort of thing. 
but you know when sometimes clothes aren't designed to sit down in and that makes me think but like doesn't everybody sit down at some point in their life you know why aren't these clothes designed to help others and like you said there is more businesses and companies and brands that are now thinking right we need inclusion for all we need more sizing we need to be able to create clothes that not look good on just one person but look good for all and work for all and I think that has also come with the more awareness in the media so it's it's definitely important for like fashion and well, it's important for everything every you know walk of life it can affect we've talked about some of those really important factors of people connecting and you know these messages that you're getting through your instagram and things of others that have been on a similar journey and just really connecting and feeling like they're not alone but uh, so that is you know a really important aspect but i'd really love to hear some of what you would like to see in terms of business, you just mentioned that you go into a clothing store and sometimes things are, you know, not a great level for you. What are some of these changes that you are affected by every day that is just would not be considered by someone that isn't a wheelchair user that needs to be considered by businesses? General accessibility for one. I understand that some buildings are, you know, older and you know, can't be modified to thing, but it's so demeaning when you have to go through a back door or, you know, I've even had to go through where they take the bins out before to get into a restaurant and or a fire exit. I remember one restaurant, they were moving chairs out the way of the fire exit, which was just not a good idea anyway, and then had to like sneak me around. And it's like, this was a relative new build as well. I was like, where is your ramp? You could even buy a ramp to go over that front step. But, you know, it's just thinking small things through that may seem mundane, but actually would help so many people, not just, but I escape clothing height. I Sometimes I just sit there and just let my sister go shopping for me because there's just not even any point of me going around because I can't even see or reach anything or just can't even get through in between the clothing rails and then like the disability sized toilets or cubicles to try on the clothes they say the disability and then the tiny I can't move the chair around to, to get changed in it's just like little things like that and that general look of people like you want to be able to go up to someone and be like could you please help me with this without having that look of like oh right you know yeah of course sort of thing whereas you want people to be immediately friendly you don't want them to be like hopping on your back you know can I help you but you want them to be there you know when you see them and you smile they smile back you know you want that friendly atmosphere when you go in and sometimes when I reach the checkout I can't even reach the checkout because it's built so high and I think that again is also so demeaning because I then have to give my money or my card to my parents or my sister or just not even go to the checkout because of all those zigzagged lines. And it's like you want those little bits of independence because, yeah, sometimes I'm not as independent as other people my age because I do rely on, you know, people to help me. And it's just like little things like that could be helped like the paying for your own clothes you know the getting round on your own the being able to reach things and it's like those little things that may seem like not that important to other people who just take it for granted it would mean so much to someone to be able to you know go into a shop move around on a floor that isn't going to be tricky on your wheels and then actually shop for yourself and pay for it and come out of there feeling you know yeah, I just went shopping. That was dead easy. I didn't have to, you know, fight my way through or do a weird route to, you know, see everything. And, you know, cafes and stuff. I think they're pretty good. Most of the restaurants I've been to, to accept like the chair into the stuff. But again, sometimes I look at a shop or I look at a thing and I go, I would love to go in there, but there's no way I'm going to fit. And it's kind of hard sometimes to be because there is so many restrictions and it is so many that could be helped and so many that could be changed and I think that is again down to awareness and just letting people know that there's so many people like such a huge percentage of people with a visible difference or a disability that there's not people um, not things made to help them you know it's, it's just for the one step standard model of a human being 
and everybody else has to just kind of like fall into line of them which just isn't the case like I said we're we're not all from the same mold we all need different things and I remember visiting a theatre I love the theatre I love you know I love a good trip to the West End me and it was a really old theatre and they had incredibly put these lifts on the old staircases and I was just like yes you know I'm not having to you know go in a weird back route to get anywhere I can go in the main door I can see the main grand foyer which normally I miss in theatres because I have to go through the stage door or something and I could go on to different levels I could like choose my seating better and I did all that there was like three different staircases with three separate lifts on that was like a platform that moved up the staircase like it was brilliant how they did it and it's just like if you can do that so can others you know lead the way show them that there is equipment out there that isn't going to ruin the look of these beautiful old buildings but be just so monumental differences to people like me because you know I'm a huge theatre geek and I got to go to a theatre through the front door and it sounds silly, but that was incredible, you know, and just stuff like that, you know, little things, big things, but, you know, just thought, general thought into things. Yeah. And it's simple design things, isn't it? It is yeah. It is just thinking about it and putting it into that design phase. But you've shared lots of ideas. So there's there's probably quite a few business owners here. So I'd I love for you to ask yourself, is your business suited? Is your business built with purpose? And is it accessible to everyone? Because if it's not, then there's certainly some steps that you can take to ensure that it is. And if you don't do it, then it doesn't make commercial sense because you're losing out on customers. <laughs> so definitely. Yep. Georgina, I've just so loved speaking with you and hearing your story and the work that you're doing. So we'll start to round it off because we're on different time zones here, but I would love to hear just some piece of advice that you've had such a journey from being in quite an isolated period of your life to just coming out of your shell. And I'd love for you to share some of your advice for someone that may be going through that similar sense, whether they're just not feeling like they're accepting themselves, perhaps they've been diagnosed with a chronic illness or disease. Maybe they're living with MECFS, but just some words of advice for others that has really helped you on your way. First thing I would say is you are not alone. You are not alone out there, whether you feel like you are, whether your family isn't accepting or your friends aren't, you know, there is an incredible community of what we call spoonies, which is what we chronic illnesses refer ourselves to um, as that's the spoon theory, which is a way that we get explained what the condition is when we first get diagnosed. There is an incredible community out there who is understanding. And, you know, I've always said my DMs on my Instagram are always open, but you know, you are not alone and you are valid. Even if people don't believe you, you are valid and so is your condition. The opinions of others only have power if you let them. You know, their voices does not define you and don't let their lack of understanding bring you down. The only one who defines you is you, not your condition, not anybody else. You are you and you are brilliant. You know, listen to your body. You know it better than anyone else. And even though it may not feel like it at times, and even within the restrictions of your health, you can still have a great life. We are incredible at learning to adapt and change. We thrive at that. And we can get through anything, you know. You are probably stronger than you probably even know. This journey is going to be tough. I am not going to lie to you. It is going to be tough and it is going to be difficult. Like I say, I still have bad days I uh, still have bad days in my health and no day is pain-free, but it's all made me who I am today, you know, stronger than I ever thought I could be, more driven. And, you know, follow those dreams. Do what makes you happy. Life is too short to do something you are not happy in. So, you know, just be you, be the beautiful you that you are and follow those dreams. Be the best version of yourself possible 
but don't put pressure on yourself. You know, everything is changing. The journey is constant and ever changing. Once you're on it, you're on it for life. And that is how we get through life. We go forward. Don't look back. We move forward. We learn and we adapt and just take care of yourself. Take care of your mind, your body, your soul. It is so important. And just love yourself for who you are, because I can assure you, you are probably going to be awesome. So just take care. Fabulous advice. So powerful. Georgina, what is next for you? Uh, Next for me, I just hope to uh, continue on this path and just taking on any opportunity or challenge that comes my way hopefully finding more doors opening I would love to pursue acting more that is my passion and I would just love to just bring more awareness more platforms you know you not inspire more people but encourage more people to be themselves to love their body to be accepting of who they are just you know take each day as it comes because within each day there's something there you know finding that little bit of positive you know that spark that joy of life you know just keep moving forward following my dreams keep that passion and that drive alive help others and I think that's one of the main things I want to do is help others along with you know helping me along the way as well so yeah hopefully just take every opportunity that comes my way that I've you know if I'm fortunate enough to receive any more which fingers crossed I'm really hoping I do you know I love this journey I I love this so much and I love talking to you and being able to meet these new communities so thank you ever so much for today it's been incredible it's been wonderful and you Georgina have a very bright future I'm sure Where can people find more about you and follow your journey? Like I said, I have my Instagram under the handle Georgina Wasdall. You may have to look up how to spell Wasdall because, you know, it's a very weird spelling. You can thank Old English for that. (laughs) And We'll put the link in the show notes. Thank you. And on my agency's Instagram and website page, Zebedee Management, they also have a blog and I've written a few pieces on there for um, different campaigns and different awareness things. And if you're looking for any more information on MECFS in the UK, I know there is Action for ME, the British Association for Chronic Fatigue Syndrome ME. ME Association. These are all charity run. And I did even look into some Australian ones because I know that's where you're from. Thank and you. I found a wonderful nonprofit organization called Emerge Australia. So there's a lot of really good information on there as well. So yeah, just any of those I would recommend. And yeah. Wonderful. Well, I have absolutely loved speaking with you today, Georgina. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. And I likewise, thank you so much for having me. Hope everyone who is listening is safe and well, especially during this weird times. And I hope you take care and are well too. Thank you so much for having me. What a wonderful conversation. Um, I just loved speaking with Georgina and hearing her story and you could just hear this innate joy in her voice. Of course, there are hard days. Um, Of course, her diagnosis can be really challenging and she spoke about some of those darker days that she experienced earlier on when she was a teen. But her life has taken a completely different role since joining with Zebedee Management. And it's just really amazing how connection and and friendships and meeting others that are going through similar circumstances can just really be extremely life enhancing. I encourage you to share your story, whether you're going through something, um, share it with those that you love. If, If you feel the urge to share it with the wider community because sharing stories can really help us come together in ways that, as Georgina explained, she could have never imagined. And it can be a really healing 
kind of practice as well. Thank you for sharing your earbuds with us for another episode of the Heal Thy Skin podcast. If you think that you have a friend, family member or colleague that may enjoy listening to this podcast episode, I'd just love for you to share with them. Until next week, be skin powered.